So just another quick video about what you did turn to four and some info on how you can maybe check what a controller will do without having access to that controller. So you can test it, but you want to know what it does when you actually get your hands on it. Um, because there was a question in the Facebook group about from a guy who was going to play on some CDJ 3000s. Could be any controllers, it's just an example. Um, but he didn't have access to them before he got to the bar, so he wanted to know what he could do. So of course, the first thing to do was to go into the manual uh, for the for the mapping for the virtual DJ for the unit, and he was specifically thinking about these hot cue buttons because they're kind of close to pads on any other controller, right? So what did they do? What can you do with them? And out of the box, you can do a hot cue, and you can do stems, and you can do sampler because that's what it says in the manual. And you can switch between those by holding shift down and the memory button. It toggles between the three modes. But what if you've done it to do something else, like maybe loop rolls or any other pad function that you may know from another controller? It's, well, it's that easy to set up. How could he figure that out um, when he didn't have this uh, access to a CDJ 3000? Could you do that? Well, actually you kind of can because you can read the script for it. And that tells you a lot. So let's go into Visual DJ here. And go into uh, controllers, and then the the thing is, you want to go into missing controller because you don't have this controller yet. So I click that, and then I simply go into edit mapping, unless it's already selected like it is right now. So I go missing controller, and then I'm gonna go uh, three thousand, and then edit mapping when I select it. I have no intention of uh, of editing this. I just want to look what it does, because I would then expect for the hot cues to do pet one two eight. That's like kind of a uh, the standard thing, and then you could easily change it. Um, but it actually doesn't. So it actually does. Uh, uh, yeah, it checks a variable, and then it uh, it compares it to something, and then uh, it does something based on that variable. But it's all directly programmed in the hot cue uh, buttons. So you can see this is one. This is two, this is three, and it, they simply change what the sampler path they do and what the stems path they do and what hot cue they do, and if they delete the hot cue. So that's directly programmed here. So if you wanted to, this to do a loop roll, you would have to uh, either expand uh, this, uh, this toggle value, the variable, uh, and do some scripting here, uh, add another script, or you'd have to maybe drop the sampler and then use that one for maybe loop roll or whatever you want to do. But you'd have to program a uh, remap, if you will, all eight hot cues. And of course, if you look at the button that actually does it, it's gonna be the shift memory button, right? So looking at shift memory, it cycles through a mode here. So it simply sets the variable, so not so interesting. Uh, but of course you could set that to four to get four values and then uh, use that to get four values uh, uh, that you could then make do something in the actual scripts and hot cues. So this is a little bit weird because I would have expected it would just use the, the pad page system. Uh, that's pretty common, uh, but it didn't. So um, so that had to be some uh, some programming done, but this could only be f figured out by looking into the mapping because it's not, of course, not part of the manual uh, because, uh, uh, because it's not what the unit does out of the box, right? And if we compare it to, for instance, the, uh, the RX3, which is uh, also uh, a, a hardware unit, a standalone unit, it's also from Pioneer. You would expect that to be uh, something similar, but it's actually not, because those are actually uh, uh, mapped like I thought they would be mapped. I'll show you in a second. But you said they, these also say you can go between some pad modes. These have buttons for it, but otherwise it's kind of the same, right? The other one is a toggle. This one has four buttons. But uh, and then it has the pads that of course does something right, um, but depending on the selected mode, so kind of similar, but it's mapped very differently because if we go into Virtual DJ here, and we uh, look up uh, another missing controller, the X3, and go into Edit Mapping, you can see these are actually. Let's just go on to the hot, hot cues. These are actually mapped to pad one to eight, like I would have expected the other one to be as well. So this is actually quite easy to change what this can do, because this would just always execute something on the active uh, pad page, 
and these are probably set by uh, by uh, by buttons that are labeled something with pad mode. So these things, so they simply set a pad page, and they actually don't even set the pad page directly. They set a pad page based on your pad page selection, so even easier to remap because these are set by uh, going into the pad page dropdown and setting each one of them. I've actually right now uh, connected a DDDASR, just so you can see how that works. Um, because that would be the same on the iX3, because if I go into hotcues, uh, this one here, you can see it's pad page selected up here. So I can pick any one of these, like for instance, remix points, and I can tell it to use maybe loop roads instead. So that's how easy this is remapped really. So a lot hard, harder on the CDJ 3000 if you want to do something similar. So uh, this was just a little video on how you can actually check what a controller will do before you uh, get access to it. Not just what it will do out of the box according to the manual, but what it can easily be changed to into doing uh, by looking at the, at the mapping on how it's set up, how it's configured, how it works.